our first episode of Disruptive Money. Now, what is disruptive money? Disruptive money is alternative forms of currency, not Bitcoin, not cryptocurrency, but things that you can use to generate resources that you can use. So let's talk about your house. There are many ways that you could extract money out of your house. The first thing that you can do is to have an ongoing business selling stuff out of your house. That can typically raise 250 up to about 5,000 a month, depending upon how good you are, where you are in the country, so on and so forth. But one of the problems is it is illegal to run a business out of your house. I know, right? It's like, wait a minute, it's my house. I pay for it. So this is what you got to do. Now, I'm going to give you somewhat some advanced techniques. First of all, you need a house or a piece of property that's in an immigrant neighborhood or lower middle class neighborhood. You're not going to be able to get away with this unless you have a business where you're selling strictly online. If you've got a lot of traffic coming in, someone may narc on you and say, hey, they're selling drugs when you could be just selling iPhones. So that's first thing. So if you already live in one of those neighborhoods, good. If you don't live in one of those neighborhoods, be very careful. I live in a rather nice neighborhood. When we moved in, I was selling a lot of stuff on Craigslist. One of our neighbors mentioned to another neighbor that, wow, they're selling a lot of stuff. I had four transactions. Four. So be very, very careful. Now, what you can do, and this is completely off the books, is pick something like an iPhone business, um, Android. You can sell phones out of your house. You could sell tires out of your house. Now, we're going to talk about in town and we're going to talk about out in the rural Georgia or the rural, or somewhere that's not really close to where you are. That's not in the city. Let's just go ahead and talk about my experience. We and my partner started selling stuff that we got out of storage units out of our houses. One weekend, we have a garage sale at my house. One weekend, we have a garage sale at her house. We were doing about 10 grand a month once we got rolling. $10,000 a month was not paying taxes because this money was 100% untraceable. Now, with us having this many garage sales, someone in my business partner's neighborhood narked on us and we got a letter from the city. And it was a $500 fine if we kept doing what we were doing. And we were just like, 5000 500 but we were getting to the point where we needed more space. But knowing what the rules were, and this is one of my fundamental rules, don't hate the player, don't hate the game, know the rules so you can win. So the rules were if we're going to continue to do that, it's going to be a $500 fine. And if we broke that fine again, it was going to be like a $1,000 fine. We're making 10000 a month. So, and that's part of the mindset that you have to make. Uh, you have way more flexibility in 30 minutes outside of the city or even maybe 30 minutes outside the suburbs. Typically, you have a plot of land. If you have an old junker, you can leave it in front of your car, no one in front of your house. No one cares. And this is where you can also maximize using your house. If you have a house in rooms with sheds and stuff, you can make so much money with storage auctions. You can make so much money flipping stuff for Craigslist. But the thing is, you need space because you don't know when stuff is selling. There was one of the guys that was on the storage auction trail. He literally had stuff in his yard that was worth thousands of dollars, but he lived in a very bad neighborhood. And it was just wild, right? Because I would go over and get stuff and I would just look and there would be literally stuff in the yard, stuff under tarps. And you go in his house, it was very clean and orderly. He said, like, you know, my wife was like, either this stuff's in the inside or it's the outside. So I just junked up the yard. This guy was doing about $150,000 per year selling strictly from his house. But the cost was 
he had to stay in a less than desirable neighborhood. So this is some of the stuff about disruptive money. It's if you're going to be in a very nice neighborhood, very polished or gated community, you can't do this stuff. Even if you have an Amazon business or a Shopify business, some people in these type of communities will complain if you have too much traffic in the way of UPS and FedEx picking up stuff. These folks are like, look, I work hard. I spend a lot of money. I don't want any riffraff running around my place, right? So there's a lot of ways. Uh, another way that you can make a lot of money off of your house is to start a business and to claim it off of your taxes. Um, this basement is probably seven, 800 square feet. I'm just guessing. Uh, I will measure and it will be 800 plus feet because then this house is 3,200. So since this basement is part of my business and legitimately it is part of my business, I can claim 25% off of my mortgage on my tax deductions. So the mortgage is 3,400 per month. So one fourth of that is going to be probably what? 900 bucks times 12. That's um, $11,000. That's pretty significant. And that trumps, get it? Trumps the standard deduction because with a few more things, I am over, I'm like, I, I can't take the standard deduction. And I can also attach this home business to my physical office business, or I can just start another business and use this alone to offset my taxes because I will have to file two tax forms. I'll have to file a personal form and I have to file a business form. Uh, no problem. But anyway, I'm saving money. And since I have such a huge deduction for my home based business, then all of this other little stuff like the camera, the microphone, all of this stuff comes into play. So what I want you to do is to sit down with a sheet of paper and creatively come up with 25 to 30 ideals that you can do from home and get your deductions.